Hello. And welcome to my humble little channel. I am the sole developer of an upcoming 2D run and gun platformer titled Citadel Stormer 2. I have spent the last two years single-handedly working on this project. I've handled the coding, the art, the music and the design of the levels, enemies, bosses and various in-game objects. During this process, I believe I have gained a few valuable insights on what it takes to create a game from scratch. In this video, I will be sharing 5 tips, or insights, drawn from my solo game dev experience. If you're a solo game developer, or even someone just starting out in game development, I think you might find this video interesting. So please stick around and watch till the end. Let us begin. Tip 1. Stay focused. Don't get distracted by new ideas. Once you have a general idea of what your game will be like, define your goals, create a checklist of tasks and focus on completing them. During the course of the project, you will keep getting new ideas. These new ideas can fall into two categories. The first category includes ideas that can be integrated into your current project, like a new weapon or enemy type. These are good. Make a note of them and add them to your checklist. The second category consists of ideas for a completely different game. These are bad. However, the freshness and novelty of those ideas may tempt you to abandon your current project and start a fresh new one based on the exciting new concepts that have just popped into your mind. But do not take the bait. Because doing so would completely negate all the time and effort you have already invested in your original goals and put you right back at the starting point of the game dev process. Furthermore, even if you choose to pursue the new project, there is no guarantee that you won't later abandon it to pursue a newer and fresher set of ideas. In the end, you would have spent all that time and effort doing game dev but have nothing to show for it except a pile of unfinished games. Basically, getting sidetracked by new ideas wastes time and energy. Every moment spent chasing after new ideas is a moment that could have been used to follow through on your initial game development goals. It is more prudent to make a note of those shiny new ideas for future reference and then redirect your focus and attention back towards your current project. Tip 2. Don't neglect the not-so-enjoyable parts of the project. Like any other creative endeavor, game dev has both fun and non-fun parts. The fun parts are usually the easy and more enjoyable tasks. Examples of these would be making conceptual sketches, writing lore, generating new ideas and so on. While these things are important in their own right, as a solo developer, be careful not to get too caught up in them. It creates the illusion of being productive but at the end of the day, you'll have nothing to show for it. A notebook full of concepts and game ideas is worthless if those ideas aren't implemented in a game project. When you spend too much time on the fun parts, you usually end up neglecting the less glamorous yet vital tasks such as coding and debugging, tasks that are essential to ensure that a game functions as intended. While the fun parts may be enticing, neglecting the fundamental technical aspects can undermine the overall quality and functionality of the game. It is important to strike a balance between enjoying the creative aspects and giving due attention to the critical back-end work that brings the game to life. Approach the project holistically and divide your tasks appropriately. Allocate dedicated time for the dull and boring stuff, even if it's not as enjoyable for you. Remember that the dry back-end work is crucial to bring your artistic vision to life and ensure you have a functional game in your hands. Learn to balance the fun and challenging aspects of development. Tip 3. Don't start peripheral activities like video devlogs. It's tempting to start a devlog or even a YouTube channel dedicated to showcasing progress on your game in video format. I've seen many solo devs do it in the hopes it may draw attention to their game. But the cold fact is that unless you already have a substantial following on YouTube, maintaining a video devlog is an absolute waste of time and energy. Let me explain. First, attracting viewers and growing your channel from scratch is an uphill task. This is due to YouTube's algorithm favoring established creators. So it's quite likely that you'll be making videos that not many people will discover, let alone watch. If that's the case, the question of growing your channel goes out the window. Lastly, there is zero to little guarantee that all your endeavors in running a YouTube devlog would result in tangible benefits, such as publicity, fan acquisition, or sales of the final product. Considering these factors, there is little justification to believe that a YouTube devlog warrants the expenditure of time and effort. All that said, a YouTube channel would be useful to store trailers and gameplay footage to share when needed. But creating highly edited devlogs can be a significant drain on resources. And if you must document your progress, consider using a simpler platform such as Twitter, which allows you to reach a wider audience. Tip 4. Don't hyperfocus on one thing. Instead cover all things. For any dedicated game developer, it is natural to strive for presenting their game in the best possible manner. However, this pursuit can sometimes turn into an endless cycle of polish and refinement. A developer may focus on perfecting and fine-tuning various aspects of their game, 
often beyond what is necessary or practical. While attention to detail and quality are crucial, becoming fixated on incessant polishing can lead to delays and a lack of progress. While dedicating lots of time to perfecting one particular aspect of a game, for example, the main character's design or a specific art asset, can result in a polished outcome, it ultimately becomes futile if other crucial elements of the game are neglected. In the grand scheme of things, focusing excessively on one aspect of your game while neglecting others hinders progress. Hyper-focusing on one task eats into your time and prevents you from completing the hundreds of other tasks that your game needs. Mental energy, like time, is limited. Once it's depleted, it will take a while for it to recharge, and until then you will not have the energy to work on the other things that your project needs. At this point you run the risk of burning out and losing interest. It is preferable to distribute your mental energy evenly among all game development tasks that require attention. While certain tasks may hold greater significance, the key is to avoid exhausting all your mental energy on a single task or category of tasks. Remember, there's no point in perfecting one thing if the other things in the game do not get made. A single task, no matter how important, should not take up all your time. Always keep in mind the broader scope of your project and then break it down into separate tasks and allot time for each according to your needs. The more tasks you complete, the more ground you'll cover. You'll see your game taking form which in turn will motivate you to keep working. With this approach, you'll always be able to go back and refine things. Tip 5. Don't rely on motivation. Cultivate discipline instead. The journey of game development is a difficult one, filled with hurdles that can easily wear you out, demoralize you, and cause you to abandon your goals. In this regard, you cannot rely on motivation alone. While feeling motivated is a good thing in general, you cannot rely on it to complete your projects. Motivation is essentially an emotion and can increase or decrease depending on external factors. There will be times when motivation disappears altogether. In contrast, being disciplined is a mindset. It is a way of living or seeing things that pushes you to get things done. It can be considered as an engine that propels you forward and sustains you throughout the entire journey. Discipline is the source of other qualities like perseverance and dedication. Discipline is the secret to success in any field, game development included. When you feel worn out, motivation disappears. But the discipline that you have cultivated will drive you to continue working on your game project. That's it for now. I believe these tips will help you solo game developers avoid fatigue, stay organized and ensure that you reach your game development goals. If you have any additional tips or insights feel free to leave a comment. If you found this video informative and enjoyable, kindly give it a thumbs up and share it with others. Additionally, if you'd like to stay tuned for more insightful content, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you for your support.